Hello and welcome to today's video. I have a big bundle of yarn here. Today I'm going to do a review of the new Nipro Symphony hand dyed yarns. I'm going to specifically talk about their DK versions, which are called Viva and Lula. new here my name is Anakin I design knitting patterns I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk you can find all the links below this video including my social media links and how to sign up to my newsletter if I sound like I have a cold it's because I have COVID um it's day three I think yes day three I had some mild symptoms on Sunday evening and then Monday morning the symptoms were worse and I tested and I tested positive and so this is day three I have mostly have kind of heavy cold symptoms so I feel like I have a really heavy cold and my voice is a bit croaky my voice is better today than it was earlier in the week um I have sort of heavy cold heavy um like my nose is a bit blocked and I cough a little bit but not a lot and um occasional temperature but mostly just a heavy cold luckily I was vaccinated last autumn so I'm very grateful for that because I feared that the symptoms would have been much worse if they if I hadn't been vaccinated but the reason I mentioned I have COVID is because I don't sound I don't think I sound like I'm 100% um my voice is still a bit croaky and I may have to edit out a few a few sniffs and coughs um, so that's why I mention it. Okay, so let's talk about this new yarn from Nipro. I saw this in a magazine, I think it was just before Christmas. No, earlier last autumn, some point last autumn, I saw an advertisement in a magazine before Christmas at some point. I had a um, new kind of uh, wholesale pack from my supplier because I do have a wholesale account with one of the Nipro distributors in the UK because I occasionally order crochet hooks for adding beads and other little notions and things from them to um, when I have a stall at shows and things. And um, I they sent me a shade card for this new yarn. So the shade card they sent me, when I opened it, I got very excited because it actually has real yarn in it. A lot of shade cards are printed, probably because doing it this way is probably expensive. I'm assuming they have to attach all these samples by hand. I don't know how you do that by machine, but I might be wrong. Um, it's probably quite expensive to do it this way and time consuming. But I really, really like having a proper shade card because you can't tell from print exactly what they look like. So I really like this. You can feel the yarn and you can see exactly what the colours look like. So I'll show you more about the shade card later on. But first, let's talk about this yarn and what I've used it for. So I decided to order a few skeins just to see what they were like. And um, I was about to go on holiday in Norway. So I grabbed two of the skeins and wound them into a ball. And then I knitted something while we were on holiday. And what I knitted was a um, brioche cow called Twist. Well, I think it's going to be called Twist. Um, to match my Twist hand warmers. So I designed these twist hand warmers for my brioche in-person workshops last year and uh, for my brioche improvers in-person workshops and they're also available from my brioche successful brioche online course um, links to that will be below this video so around Christmas time I thought I fancy knitting a pair that I can actually wear so I cast them for these and then I also cast them for a cow um, which I will try on. I don't think I'll keep it on because I think I'll get too hot. The cowl, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to release the cowl or keep it just some online courses. I probably will release the cowl as a pattern. Whether I will re release the hand warmers in the future or not, I don't know. At the moment, they're just available as my uh, as part of my um, in-person workshops and my successful brioche online course. This cowl will also be available from the Successful Brioche online course. This is knitted in the um, Nipro Symphony um, Viva yarn. 
which is this one. Uh, so, the, so I'll talk about that first, and we'll talk about the other DK arm, which is called Luna. So the Symphony Viva is 100% superwash merino wool. 100 grams has 220 meters, 240 yards. So quite good amount of yarn in a 100 gram skein, about average, I think, uh, for DK yarn. Knitting this brioche cow and these, these, these brioche amormers, I felt like the yarn was a little bit splitty. I was using wooden needles from Lantern Moon, the new Lantern Moon ebony needles, and the yarn felt a bit splitty to me. And by the time I finished knitting this cow, I wasn't that keen on it. I love the finished result. I think it looks great. It has good st stitch definition in the uh, brioche. It's nice and bouncy and stretchy like brioche is. I like the colours. Um, I'm happy with the finished product, but I wasn't that keen on it. And then... Um, yesterday i sat down and i decided to knit some swatches so i could show off some more stitch patterns other than just um brioche so let me just find my um swatches here so i knitted a lace swatch so it's not a very big lace swatch i have 29 stitches and i did three six row repeats and then I also knitted a stocking stitch swatch. So as you can see from the stocking stitch swatch, it has good even stitch definition. Now this one, this lace swatch, I blocked, I wet blocked. So I sprayed it with uh, water and then I pinned it out and left it to dry. And this um, stocking stitch swatch, I just sprayed it with water. So it was fairly wet. And then I kind of smoothed it out of my blocking board. And then I just put one of my Knit Pro Knit blockers is that what they're called knit yeah whatever they're the comb type things i just put one at the top one at the bottom just to keep because the edges were curling a bit just to keep them flat so it would dry flat but i didn't stretch it or anything like that and it's knitted up really smoothly really good stitch definition the stitches look really even um how even your stitches look will depend on the yarn you're knitting with it's I think sometimes it doesn't look very even. We think it's our knitting skills. And I've certainly seen knitters beat themselves up over something that doesn't look even because they think that their knitting is bad. Usually it's to do with the yarn. Obviously, if you're a less experienced knitter, it may just be that you need more practice to get even stitches, but quite often it's to do with the yarn. And sometimes blocking it under a little bit of tension can help even out the stitches. So this knitted off fairly evenly before I blocked it, but I did block it just because I wanted to make sure it lay flat. Um, because even though I got garter stitch edges, it was still curling in a little bit. A yarn that has been machine dyed is usually completely solid, so there will be no variation in the colour at all. And when you pick up some of these in the skein, it doesn't look like there's any variation. But when you knit it up, you can see that there is a slight variation in the colour. And to me, that just adds a little bit of depth to the yarn. And this is the second, this is the lace swatch. So it looks really nice in lace, blocked up really nicely. Um, very happy with the way it knitted up in lace. Now, my feeling when I finished knitting this brioche uh, set was that I wasn't 100% keen on it. I liked it, but it wasn't my favourite because I felt like it was a little bit splitty. After knitting this last night, and I must admit, obviously knitting this, and this last night didn't take as long as knitting this. Um, last night it didn't split at all. So whether that's different techniques or whether it's just because I didn't knit with it for that long, I don't know. I think I think I was using the same needles last night. Um, or I may have used my Lycka needles last night, which are a bit blunter than the Lantern Moon ones. But I was using wooden needles anyway. And my experience last night was that it wasn't splitty at all. This is the purple that I used for this. So if I just put that down here, if I try to untwist the yarn from one end and kind of open it up, it has one, two, three, four, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six strands, there's six strands in total. Um, I think to make a yarn kind of splitty, the more strands you have, the more likely it is to split. And the more loosely spun it is, it's more likely to split. So I would say looking at this, it is fairly loosely spun. It's quite a bouncy yarn. If I pull it like that, 
it feels like it has a bit of like give in it. It's sort of feeling like a squishy yarn. Based on my experience in Norway knitting this, I was not going to stock this yarn in my sh online shop. Um, I was thinking about getting a little bit of both of those yarns for my stall at Unravel at the end of February. But I think I more or less decided I was not going to get the Viva. I would be happy to use it for like magazine designs and things like that. I think it's a nice yarn, but I decided I wasn't going to stock it. After I knit the last night, I was like, maybe I will. So my original... Um, feeling after I knitted this was I wasn't it was okay but it wasn't my favorite yarn compared to some of the indie dyed um 100 superwash marina yarns I've knitted with it wasn't my favorite but knitting with it last night if that was all the knitting I'd done with it I was quite happy with it I quite liked the way it knitted up last night um it felt nice to knit with it didn't split at all last night and I was quite happy with this. If I'd only knitted these swatches, I would have said, yeah, brilliant yarn, really like it. But my experience knitting this wasn't the same. So whether that's just the difference between brioche and stocking stitch and lace, I don't know. I haven't had that experience with any other yarns. So my original decision was I'm not that keen on it, but it's okay. But now I'm thinking maybe I will try it again. I do have two other skeins that I've bought that I haven't used yet. So I got this color, which is called Himalayan Salt. And this one, which is called Wedding Pink. So Wedding Pink and Himalayan Salt, which was the two other option, options for knitting this. So I think I probably will use these for something at some point. I don't know when, but um, I do like them. And I may get a few skeins in for Unravel. I haven't decided yet. So my initial view of this was I wasn't that keen on it. And after last night, I think I quite like it. I do like the colours. It comes in a large range of colours. So let's look at the shade card again. So it's got all these, a little bit bent. It's got all these shades. Loads and loads of colours. Um, sort of semi solid, semi-solid semi -solid colours. And then down here, there are a few slightly variegated colours, which I didn't order any of those. And then they also have one called Flora, which is the same, I assume it's the same yarn because it's 100% superwash merino, but it's naturally dyed. And they only have these one, two, three, four, five, six colors here. So it looks like the same yarn, but it's been naturally dyed. So I didn't buy those because I didn't see the point. The colors didn't really speak to me. There's only six colors. I decided I want to try the brighter colours first. Let's talk about the Symphony Luna yarn. So with the Luna, I ordered some more colours. I knitted this. Let me just show you. So I knitted this up. I originally started this with a lighter pink, uh, which didn't have enough contrast with the... Um, this this color the lighter color here is called pink something um to me it looks more like camel color than pink but i originally started this with a bright pink instead of this um purple uh, or plum color but i decided it was too there wasn't a enough color contrast so i was going to do it with that one and then i accidentally found the wrong skin and ended up with that one so and then i ordered a few other colorways as well because i do quite like this yarn so this is what i've knitted with this and i haven't blocked this yet so it does look a little bit uneven because i haven't blocked it yet so i've done a stranded color work cow which also has some stocking stitch and um a pico edge this pattern will be available at some point hopefully before unravel depending on when i get around to writing the pattern so i knitted up some swatches in this as well so again i did a lace swatch same lace pattern as the pink one when i unpin this from my blocking board earlier yeah still the case the so i cast on the same number of stitches i knitted it on the same exact needles and the same number of rows and the uh marina silk blend is slightly wider so let's look at this yarn. This is called Luna. So it's Nipro Symphony Luna. And it's 75% Merino. Doesn't have any superwash on so assuming not. Um, 25% silk. 
100 grams has 182 meters, 200 yards. So less meterage than the uh, Viva, than the 100% Super Shimano. And I'll come to that in a minute because there is a reason for that. Um, so I knitted this cow, which will be available soon, hopefully. And um, I really like it. So this is strand of color work. I haven't blocked this yet because I was going to do it last night and then I was worried it wouldn't be um, dry enough. And I wanted to film this video today if I was up to it. So I'm going to probably going to block it this afternoon i also knitted a lace swatch which is the same um same needles and same stitch pattern and the same number of stitches cast on as my pink one and it blocked that wider now i didn't pay much attention to the blocking i just sprayed it with water and then i used my nip blockers and just pinned it out on my blocking board and it wasn't until i got it off this morning that i realized that the um, Marina silk version, the lunar version, is actually slightly wider. And that is because of the silk, I think. The silk makes the yarn relax a little bit more. It's also spun differently, which, which we'll come to in a second. Then I also knitted up a stocking stitch swatch. Now, this is the same number of stitches as this one. These swatches had 29 stitches, these had 20. But I didn't do the, I didn't deliberately do the same number of rows, although they are about the same length. This one, when I unpinned it, and I didn't stretch this, I just sprayed with water, patted it down, then I just put a nip block at the top and bottom to keep it flat. And I would say the, the Luna is maybe smidgen wider, but not a lot. Uh, yeah, maybe like a stitch wider or something, but not a lot. But again, it does have quite good stitch definition. The stitch definition is not as even, I don't think, as... The Viva, they has got nice stitch definition. A little bit more kind of maybe rustic looking. And I want to show you what happens when I twist this yarn. So this is actually, and I must, I know that some yarns are spun this way, but I don't think I've noticed it in any of the yarns I've knitted with before. But this yarn was less splitty, but I did have one problem. So if I untwist each of these strands, it's two strands. So it's basically spun into two ply yarns. So each one of these strands is called a ply. And then those two are spun into a thicker yarn. So it is kind of two two ply yarns spun into um four ply. We'll make a four ply yarn. Um, four ply in terms of the number of strands not in terms of the thickness, because in the UK we also use ply to um, talk about the thickness. A four-ply yarn would be the same as fingering weight in the States. But now I've split this off like that, it doesn't kind of like go back together very easily. So one thing I found with this yarn was that as I was knitting, I would occasionally catch my needle between these two strands, which are made up of two strands. So the annoying thing with that is that it's more difficult to spot as you're knitting because this is thicker than if I just caught can't undo this um, one of these individual strands if you like so that's made up of two strands and the two threads of two strands makes a thicker thread. So when I caught my needle in between here it was more difficult to see that I'd done that whereas if I caught just one of the little plies they're very thin, so that would be more visible, but that didn't happen at all. But I did catch it between these two strands quite regularly. It is quite um, a high twist yarn, so it feels like a higher twist yarn than the Viva, although I haven't checked that because I mean, there are ways of checking how many twists per inch, but I've never been very good at doing that. Um, but I haven't, but to me it feels like a high twist yarn, which is why it also has few meters per hundred gram because if you think about it, if you make more twists per inch or per centimeter then you're going to be using up more yarn per centimeter than a yarn that has fewer twists per centimeter which means that you'll get less meterage for the whole hundred gram because they both weigh hundred gram but this has the 30 meter less No, nearly 40 meters less so the other one had 220 meters and the Luna has 182 so 38 meters less 
that's quite a lot that's quite a big difference so although this didn't feel as slitty as the other yarn when i knitted with it i did occasionally catch it between these two strands although i didn't do that at all again i didn't do that at all when i was knitting these swatches last night so i only had this problem with the both of the yarns with them splitting when i was knitting the bigger project rather than these two projects uh these two swatches and i guess that's because of the fact that i was knitting with it for much longer when i was doing the actual cows and things so i do really like the um luna and i was thinking i would definitely stock that i think the colors that it comes in are great it doesn't have the selection of colors that the viva has and i kind of wish it would come in more colors but it doesn't hopefully they might do in the future so it comes in these colors here so it's a much more limited range um but i do like the colors that come in the colors are fairly rich they're all semi-solid solid semi-solid semi -solid colors there's one which i guess is the undyed bleached version and then there are a variety of like dyed colors which are all sort of semi-solid almost solid colors so i do really like the yarns and it's, it's really nice to knit with i really enjoyed knitting this cow um and i would be happy to knit with it again they also have this other yarn which i haven't tried it i have got some skeins of it which i'll show you in a minute but they also have a yarn called terra which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, four ply fingering weight yarn. So that would be equivalent to a sock yarn. And that comes in all these colours. So I did order, originally I ordered this one, which I was considering winding up to knit some socks with when we went to Norway, but then I didn't take a sock project. Um, this one. And then I ordered these as well when I placed my second order. Really like these three together. I also really like. I really like these three together because it feels a little bit of like a fade almost although this is there's more contrast between this and that one than is between these two uh, but also i think these three are really nice together so i am considering that for a future shawl project but i have other things i need to knit at the moment so i haven't tried that yarn yet it feels very nice it's very soft i will at some point this spring try it i will probably knit a pair of socks in one skein and i might also do a shawl project i haven't decided yet I might need a pair of socks first and see what i think of it but at the moment i have other knitting priorities i need to get on with so i didn't want to include that in this um review because i haven't tried it properly yet but my first impression is that it feels very soft i like the colors it comes in a range of solid semi-solid colors and variegated colors um so i do like them Nipro is called Knitter's Pride in the US, so I assume this yarn will also be available there. Um, Nipro are stocked all over Europe. Uh, they're a worldwide company. From what I understand, they're produced in India. But what I've read about them, it sounds like they're a very good ethical company and that they provide support um, and treat their employees in an ethical way. That's certainly what I've read obviously i can't go to india to check if that's true but that's what i've read so i hope that is true um and i do like these yarns i do feel a bit like some india dyes might think this is um competition for them i don't think it is because this will mainly be available through yarn shops and even though some india dyes do sell through yarn shops especially here in the uk that's less likely um, most indie dyes in this country may be stocked in a handful of yarn shops at the most maybe one or two local yarn shops from their area might stock them but on the whole most indie dyes in this country sell directly through their own websites and at shows so i think this yarn is more likely to be stocked in yarn shops and therefore available to more people um so i don't know whether it's really a direct um competition to indie dyes let me know if you've tried this yarn do you want to try it has my review turned you off trying them or not so my written original kind of first impression of the viva which is the hand and superwash merino was i'm not that keen after knitting with it last night i was like i think i dismissed it too quickly i should try it again and i do have two skeins so i can try it again and then with the luna which is the merino silk my initial reaction was i really like it um but i 
I'm kind of mixed about both of them, to be quite honest. But I haven't dismissed them. But I wouldn't say they're my new favourite yard either. But I'm happy to use them. And I certainly wouldn't dismiss them for future projects. So let me know if you tried them. What do you think? Uh, let me know if you found this review helpful and enjoyable. Will you try the yarns or not try them based on this review? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope it wasn't too annoying watching me with my croaky voice and my um, COVID. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.